I have set my mind on sin freeness, on sin freeness. I have set my mind on righteousness, on Christ's righteousness. And he I have set my mind on sin freeness, on sin freeness. I have set my mind on holiness, on holiness. I have set my mind on graciousness, on Jesus' graciousness. And when I seek to keep God's law, I see within heaven's open door. I have set my mind on sin freeness, on Jesus sin freeness. And when I look by faith to thee, I see your love that saves me. I have seen the heavenly I have set my mind on the love of Yah, on the love from Thusiah. I have set my heart on my Savior, on Yahweh my Savior. And when I live From Jesus' love in me And when I look by faith to Thee I see Your love that saves me I have seen the heavenly sanctuary From me, I have seen the heavenly sanctuary with my sins removed from me. I have set my mind on sin. Judgment has set, the books have been opened. How shall we stand in that great day when every thought and word and action for the righteous judge shall wait? 
shall we stand in the great day? How shall we stand in the great day? Shall we be found before him wanting? Or with our sins all washed away? Welcome to the Escape for Thy Life radio broadcast. This is a presentation of the independent Thusia Seventh-day Adventist Church, a revival of original Adventism and ancient Christianity. Our speaker is Brother Nairon Medina. Good day. This is Brother Medina for Thusia Seventh-day Adventist. And please let us start with a word of prayer. Gracious, loving Father, please be with us as we enter into your word. Bless people that they may understand the truth and that they may submit to the truth for change and for the end. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. Today we want to talk about the change of justification. The change of justification. Yes, my dear people, written here in the Bible, are very important things for our salvation. They are very important for you. But you can only know these things if you do research and study upon them. Things are written here to help us all. And we want to look at some of these things in Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. We want to read Romans chapter 4 to you and explain to you something very important written there for all our salvation. Yes, my dear people. Now, in Romans chapter 4, we read from verse 1. Follow carefully. It says this, What shall we say then? That Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, had found. Let's just stop there for a moment. Paul is speaking. Paul is a Jew. And Abraham is his distant father by virtue of flesh. But he's asking all of us, what do you think Abraham, our father, found out? Now, Abraham is known as the father of the faithful. But something made Abraham faith, uh, famous. And he's asking us, what do you think Abraham found out? Well, let us find out. Let us find out what Abraham found out. He continues, verse 2. For if Abraham were justified by works, he had whereof the glory, but not before God. End of quote. Stop there now. What did Abraham find out? Abraham find out, found out, my dear people, that if he sought to be justified by his works, he had wear of the glory, but he couldn't glory before God because that was nothing to God. Abraham found out that justification by faith was better than justification by works. Abraham found out that justification by works meant nothing. Abraham was famous. And what was he famous for? We're told he found out that justification by works were wrong. He could only glorify and exalt himself, but he couldn't glorify and exalt God. That is what Abraham found out. So the first thing to tell you is that in the Bible, there is a difference between justification by faith and justification by works. And that Abraham, why was he famous? What did he find out? that you couldn't be justified by your own works. That's right. That's what Abraham found out. Let us continue to read. Verse 3. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Stop there again. So the scripture that Paul is depending on 
to show us that Abraham found out that justification by works was wrong. He says, the scripture tells us Abraham believed God and it, what he believed about God, was counted unto him for righteousness. So Abraham got his righteousness from the item that was counted unto him. Not his ability to believe, not by doing works, because the ability to believe is a work of the mind, a mental work. So Abraham found out that he had to believe God. And the knowledge of God that came to him for him to believe, when he believed it, that knowledge was counted unto him for righteousness. So Abraham would have gotten righteousness from that knowledge of God. That's what we're being told here. Let's continue and see. Verse 4. Now to him that work it is the reward not reckoned of grace but of debt. So we are being cautioned that if you could do works for God to justify you, then God owe you justification. So the reward of justification would be given to you because God owe it to you. That you, it is your debt. It is God's debt towards you. So that you do the works. And God say, well, okay, I have a debt that I have to pay off. Let me give you righteousness by your works. So we are being told it is not of grace, not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But why should righteousness be reckoned of grace? Because human beings don't have grace to save anyone. And if righteousness is reckoned to us by grace, and grace is the grace of God, then we are saved by God's grace, and not by our works. That's right. We have been clearly told here of the science of salvation, which you, my dear people, need to know, because you do not know this. So the Bible continues to explain to us. I read again verse 4 and then go to verse 5. Verse 4, Now to him that work it is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. So God owe you something, because you do the works, and he owe it to give you righteousness now. But we are being told here, your reward will be owed to you by debt. You see, and not of grace. Verse 5 continues. But to him that work it not, notice this, but to him that work it not, but believe it on him that justified the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Okay, stop right here. Let's look at this some here now. Because this verse is very instructive, telling us various things. We are told to him that work it not. You didn't do any works. But you believe on him, that is God, who justified the ungodly. We are being told your faith is counted for righteousness. Now, some people come and say, look here, you see, faith is believing. You're justified by faith, and your faith is counted for believing. So, what are you saying? That God takes your believing and counts your believing for righteousness? If you believe for God to justify you, before he justifies you is when you believe. So it is a sinful man, not yet converted, that is believing. So now God is going to take the belief or the trusting of an unconverted man and declare him righteous for that so that your righteousness comes from your unconverted state. It doesn't make sense. Faith here is not believing. Let us see what faith is to show you that the Bible contrasts it with believing. I quote Romans 3.22 Even the righteousness of God 
which is by faith of Jesus Christ. So you see whose faith it must be? The faith of Jesus Christ. I read again, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Did you just see that? Here we are told the faith is the faith of Jesus Christ, and we are told them that believe. So believing is different to faith. Because this word, verse shows you the faith is the faith of Jesus Christ. Right? But them that believe. So we have two things here, the faith of Jesus Christ and believing. That clearly shows you that the faith of Jesus Christ is not believing. Yes, my dear people. Good. Let's read again. Verse 5. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justified the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. That faith is evidence of things not seen, the revealed truths of Christ. That faith is what you believe. And when you believe that faith, that faith is counted unto you for you to get righteousness. Because righteousness is in the faith of Jesus Christ. Yes, my dear people, that's right. How do you know that? Again, Romans 3, 22. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, into all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. So here your scripture clearly tells you that the righteousness of God is in the faith of Jesus Christ. So you must believe the faith of Jesus Christ that you can be justified with the righteousness that is in the faith. Yes, my dear people, that's what you're being shown here. Let's read on again. Before we read on, this is telling you and I here of things that a lot of people have lost. A lot of people have lost the sight of the fact that you must be repent of your sins and you must believe to be justified. You must repent, you must believe to be justified. Repentance and believing are very important for a person to be justified. These concepts are found in the Bible and explained in the Bible. To believe is to accept something as truth. To believe unto life is to accept something as truth to change your life. Because some people just have scientific believing, just believe a fact. But God wants you to believe to change your life. And believing that will have its results of your life being changed. That's the kind of believing God wants you to have. So to believe is to accept the information that comes to you as truth to change you. Yes, my dear people. To repent is to change your mind about the way you have been living, walking after idols, walking after sin, walking after evil. You've got to change your mind about those wrongs. So the Bible tells you clearly you have to repent and believe. Let's look again at verse 5. But to him that worketh not, but believe it on him that justified the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Did you just see that? So you must repent and believe. You must change your mind about your life of sin. And you must believe. For if you don't do that, there is no justification. And what is justification? God giving you righteousness. God giving you the Holy Spirit. God making you righteous. That cannot happen if there is no genuine repentance and genuine believing. That is what must happen. That is what verse 5 tells us. And then it goes to an example of David in verse 6. Let's read it. Even as David also described it, the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness without works. Did you see that? So the works can't get the man righteous. And God imputes righteousness to the man without works. 
And David speak about the blessedness of such a man whom God impute righteousness without works. Yes, my dear people, what does this mean? The word impute is a mental counting, a mental estimation. If somebody stands up and they watch you and they esteem you to be a certain way, to be a kind person, they esteem you to be that. That is what the word impute or count means, a mental estimation, not a verbal declaration. Don't let them fool you. A mental estimation. The only difference is, is that when God mentally esteem you righteous, he changes you because you repented and believed. You see, some people hear the truth, but they don't repent and they don't believe. They just know it's the truth and they just put it aside and put it away because they're not interested in following. Then God cannot esteem in his mind that person to be righteous because he didn't repent and believe. So that's why verse 6 tells us, even as David described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness without works. So when God imputes righteousness to that person, it means he mentally esteems righteousness to that person. So that that person, by God's mental estimation, gets the righteousness. He doesn't have to say, you are righteous. Declared openly so, he doesn't have to say that. You won't hear his voice. But in heaven, he will, in his mind, esteem you as righteous. And that is what changes you. Let's read on. Verse 7. Saying, what did David say? Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. That's a quote from David 32, Psalms 32 verse 1, where he says, Blessed is the man whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. So when God forgives you of your sins, which is identified as covering your sins, it is when he justifies you. He imputes the righteousness of Christ from the faith of Jesus Christ to you. And then it goes on in verse 7, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are covered and whose sins are, whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Then we ask, then we are told, Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Now hold on there. We have sin in the hearts when we are unconverted. And sin in the lives, our lives, when we are unconverted. When you repent and you believe and God justify you, what does he do? He imputes righteousness to you. And at that time, he forgives you of all your sins that you have in you. And that is the reason why we are told, blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. What sin? Sins in your heart, which is yours. He does not impute it to you. He doesn't count it as yours anymore. And that is what causes it to disappear. Forgiveness of sins causes the sins to disappear. And that is God's work, God's miraculous work. So when he does not impute sin, those sins no longer exist. At the, at the first instance, under prevenient grace, he had caused those sins not to exist in your mind at that moment for you to hear the gospel. Now that you hear the gospel, he caused those sins not to come back. And that is God forgiving you of your past, of, of, of those sins that were once in your mind but is now past. So he no longer imputes those sins to you, but he changes you at that moment because he imputes righteousness to you. So you have the righteousness that he impu imputes to you. If you read Romans 3.22 again, let me read it according to the Greek text. It says, even the righteousness of God, which is true faith of Jesus Christ, into all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. 
Do you see that? The righteousness of God, which is imputed to you, must go into you. The Greek word is eis, E-I-S. It means into. So the righteousness of God goes into you in place of sins that were once into you. Yes, my dear people, that is what God does for you. So, we are told. Now to him, we are told again. It says this, verse 8. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Then we are told in verse 9. Commit this blessedness then upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also. For we say that faith was reckoned, the same word imputed, to Abraham for righteousness. Stop right there. So the question is asked, does this work of justification come upon those who are circumcised only or upon those who are uncircumcised? Like for instance, we are uncircumcised. Could that work of justification come upon us who are uncircumcised or must we be circumcised? The Jews used to teach that you got to be circumcised and a lot of works had to be done before God could justify you. So Paul is answering that and he's asking, does this work, this blessedness, the blessing of justification by faith, come upon the circumcision only, that is the Jew, or the uncircumcision also, that is the Gentiles? And then he reaffirms, for we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. So God counted faith to Abraham for righteousness. Why? Because righteousness by faith means faith as the revealed truths of the word of God has righteousness in it. Yes. That's why the Bible says in Proverbs, he that speaketh the truth, show it forth righteousness. Because the truth has righteousness in it. And faith is the revealed truths of the word of God. So righteousness is in the faith. And if God wants to give Abraham righteousness, he must impute faith to him for him to get the righteousness. Yes, my dear people. And that's why we are told here again that does this blessedness, the blessing of justification by faith, come upon the Jews, the circumcision only, or the uncircumcision also, which are the Gentiles? For we say faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. And then he shows us that not only Jews, but Gentiles can get justification by faith also. Because verse 10 tells us, how was it then reckoned, that is to Abraham, when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? The answer, not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. In other words, God justified Abraham, imputed righteousness to Abraham from faith, or imputed faith to Abraham for righteousness when he was uncircumcised. That's what we are told. But why would God do that when he was uncircumcised? He continues in verse 11. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had, yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. Let's just stop right there. Well, what does this tell us? It tells us that when God imputed righteousness to Abraham, Abraham was not circumcised. He was uncircumcised. But Abraham believed. And God imputed faith, the faith of Jesus Christ, the revealed truths of Jesus Christ unto Abraham for him to get the righteousness. And God did that to Abraham before he was circumcised. Why? That he will become the father of all of those who are circumcised also. That you, the Gentile, you repent and believe, 
and God impute faith to you for righteousness, changing you. Does he do that to you because you're circumcised? No, you're not circumcised. Well, he does it to you when you're not circumcised, as he did it to Abraham, that Abraham would be your spiritual father because he received righteousness when he was not circumcised. Yes, my dear people. So you, the Gentile, have confidence that Abraham is your spiritual father because Abraham was justified by faith. He received the faith of Jesus Christ for his righteousness before he was circumcised. So that Abraham is not only the father of the uncircumcised who are justified, but also the circumcised also who are justified. Yes, Abraham is their father also. But what are we seeing here? We are seeing basic concepts being explained here by Paul. And we found out that Abraham found out that righteousness by works. If you do a lot of works to be justified, you won't be saved. So that when knowledge of God was given to Abraham, the Bible shows us that God showed Abraham the stars and tell Abraham, I will make you a seed of nations like the stars which cannot be numbered. And then the Bible in Genesis 15, 5 tells us Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. What did he believe? The knowledge that God gave him. And so that knowledge was faith, the revealed truths of Christ. And that was righteousness. So God imputed that faith to him for him to get the righteousness. He didn't have to do works before and then God make him righteous. No. He was made righteous by faith and not by works. This is the lesson we learn. That we look for justification from God because it is God that justified. And we are justified by his faith. The faith of Jesus Christ. The revealed truths of Jesus Christ. Which we believe. So believing is not the faith. So when God imputed the faith for you, when he mentally esteemed that faith to you, for you to get his righteousness, you will get his righteousness because he imputed faith unto you. So you're righteous by faith. Yes, my dear people, this is what the Bible is telling you so that you would know you're made righteous by faith. Now, some of you may find this as a kind of a difficult thing to believe, that we are talking difficult things. But you need to understand that God imputes righteousness to you. He mentally esteems it to you. And that is what makes you get the righteousness of God. And that righteousness of God is in the faith of Jesus Christ. So when you believe the faith of Jesus Christ, God imputes righteousness unto you. But at that same time, he forgives you for the sin of the carnal mind, which is suspended at that time for you to know the truth. So when you receive the truth, you are now changed. You are now a new creature in Christ Jesus. This is how justification by faith takes place. This is how the change takes place. Yes, my dear people. We wanted you to know this, that you would understand there's a process, there's a science in salvation. Now that you know the science, now you could be saved. Just repent and believe and really honestly repent and believe the truth in a way for it to change you. So, call us at 6250446. 6250446. We'll give you this program plus others that went before and we will help you in Bible study and other counseling that you may need. 6250446. And may God bless you until we meet again. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Thank you for joining us for another Escape for the Life radio broadcast. Remember to call us at 528-2123 or 528-1015. You can also join us on Telegram at Thusia SDA Global Sentinel. Until next week, may God richly bless you. Oh,